come down this way down here. Now the walls have uh, tendons running through uh, a hollow duct through the middle of them. And those tendons are stressed to introduce compression into the wall. And when the uh, wall moves under a seismic event, they provide a restoring force to pull the wall back into the original position. And then what you can't quite see at the moment, but you'll see when you go around the corner, is behind this column we have our energy dissipators, which are uh, a U-shaped flexural plate. And as the two walls are moving, you're getting some rocking action between the walls and those plates are flexing, and that's providing our, our seismic energy absorption. So that, that basically is the structure. If you take a step back from the detailed design, for us, um, the building is uh, dual in nature, if you like. The shear walls are really quite sophisticated uh, in terms of the structure and technology involved in building them. But as some of you may already have noticed, the rest of the timber structure is about as simple as it could possibly be. It's uh, rebated four foot columns, three bolts hold everything together in pairs of, um, pairs, pairs of beams. Uh, so all the structure you can see now will be on show. We're pretty accepting of the LVL as a manufactured product. Uh, choice one was to leave it as it comes out of Hunters, unscraped, unsanded very much as an um, industrial product. We said no. We're trying to finish it, um, and really, I'm not sure that when you say that the buildings are closed and uh, your moisture levels change, I'm not sure that moisture levels will change. You know, we'll be at 14, 15 percent absolute maximum when we close in. If we put the linings on, we're not expecting to drop below that. Well, the what you see now is what you'll see when we've finished all the structures out.